work in the executive branch just like any of the other two branches of government. Okay? Um, there are three different levels, with the highest level being the federal, and then we, each state has its own state level of executive. And then each state has the ability to create local governments who operate in different ways. But no matter the branch of government, it, there are different, no matter the branch of government, there are, uh, you know, they all have different responsibilities. The legislative branch, what is their main job? Make laws. Make laws. Can the executive branch make laws? No, no matter how much they, they can ask Congress to make laws, but can't make laws. The executive branch's job is to do what? Enforce laws, okay? So we're going to start at the top. I haven't updated my PowerPoint, and I apologize. The national level of the executive branch. Last time I did this, these gentlemen were the ones in charge. But what is the title of the person who is in charge of the federal level of the executive branch. President of the United States. POTUS. President of the United States. And the president has a lot of advisors. A lot of advisors. The chief among those advisors is the president's running mate, and their title is vice president. So who, who is the president pictured here? And who is the vice president? Mike Pence. Mike Pence. Now, are they the president? They are no longer in charge. They are no longer in power as they lost the last election. And who, is be who would be the person in power now is president? Joe Biden. Joe Biden. And then vice president? Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. So we can, I'll show you some pictures of them a little later on. I just didn't, I just didn't update this. Sorry. Okay. So uh, you know, the job of any executive, whether it be at any level, state, local, federal, is to execute laws, carry out laws, enforce laws. The President of the United States doesn't just have this one little tiny responsibility. It is a massive job on the shoulders of any President. And the President also is responsible for preparing a national budget how often does the president have to prepare a budget? Hmm? Every year. Every year. The president is responsible for preparing a budget. What does that mean? How money is spent? Where is the money going to be directed to? Now, just because the president prepares it, does that mean it's gospel, it's set in stone? No. No, who has to approve the budget? Congress. Congress. Is it so possible sometimes for the president to prepare something and have money want, intended to be spent a certain way and Congress says, no, we, we're not going to do that? Yeah, it's happened several times in the past few years. What happens, when, what, is it, what occurs when that happens? It's called a shutdown. You ever heard of a government shutdown? Because we can't agree on, on how to get the money done because you know, there might be one or two issues that they disagree on and that the, the entire budget doesn't pass. Ever heard of the government shutdown? Some of you guys may have been affected by that if your parents have jobs in the federal government. All right? But that's the job of the president to prepare the, the annual budget. Usually the president, you know, informs Congress what they're going to have in there during the, that speech they give once a year. All right? In addition to heading up the executive branch, the president is also responsible for choosing their own help, choosing their own advisors. If you are an advisor or a person directly appointed by the president to give advice, you would be a cabinet officer within one of the many departments that the president has access to. The president also has the ability to appoint ambassadors and any federal judgeship that becomes available, all the way from like federal circuit court judge in Beckley, West Virginia, all the way up to Supreme Court Chief Justice, if that post becomes available. The president is able to appoint these positions. Just because the president appoints you, does that mean it's gospel set in stone that you're going to be have that job? Because all appointments of the president are approved by 
Congress, usually the Senate. So it, that what is that called when one branch has the ability to stop another branch or do something? Checks and balances are still at work within all the branches of government. All right. The president also, their biggest job is just to administer the federal bureaucracy. Yesterday, we defined the word bureaucracy. What was the definition? An organization like government with many departments, rules, and procedures. That's exactly right. The organization like government with many departments, rules, and procedures. And the, the federal government's executive branch is no different. For example, the CIA is not really allowed to come to your house and do surveillance on you because the CIA operates on a global scale. The FBI might do the surveillance on you because that's the part of the, that's the executive department that handles domestic things, whereas the Central Intelligence Agency does things globally. It's the bureaucracy. Okay, hopefully nobody's listening to you, but but um, if you are up to no good, they might might have that done. All right. Uh, let's see. Finally, the president has the ability to grant pardons or amnesty. And Cooper, how do we define that? No, you, no, you good. And no, y'all good. No, good. So the difference between pardon and amnesty is pardon is for an individual, and amnesty is for a group. A group. Excellent. All right, and we, we did some examples yesterday of how the difference between a pardon and amnesty. When do you see ma the majority of presidential pardons? Usually the last day or two in office. Why? It's kind of unpopular. Like, you, you mean to tell me that I could be convicted, that I could be arrested for a crime, meaning there's probable cause to be arrested, Put in, you know, have have a trial where I am judged by a jury of my peers, where evidence is brought against me, sentenced by a judge, and then put into a prison, all based on evidence, and that the president can just be like, "No, you good." Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of kind of a big deal because you're just throwing all that work away. Why is that a thing? You know, I, I guess it's part of the Constitution. Give the president this ability. Huh? That's dumb. Well, it was helpful at the beginning. Imagine you're Thomas Jefferson and you've just taken over for John Adams and the Alien Sedition Acts were still on the books and all your Democratic Republican buddies are locked up. No, y'all good. And he pardoned them all. Because were they put in what, what were they put in prison for? Freedom of speech. You know, they were speaking, and they, you know, he dismissed that. So, but you know, like there's a, not always, a, you know, there's other examples where presidents have used the power, you know, for their own benefit or to cover up something or what. Lots of conspiracies. All right. Okay. So, um, the, to continue at the federal level of the executive branch, we mentioned it's not just the president, the vice president, the, but the president's advisors. What's that called? Cabinet. The cabinet. And here's some logos that depict the president's cabinet. Lots of departments. Lots and lots of departments contained within. And each of these departments is headed up by an individual who carries out the bureaucracy of that job. Like the Department of Agriculture and Commerce and whatever all right and we looked at some of these people yesterday like you know dr janet yellen secretary of treasury and john i think tom vilsack secretary of agriculture xavier um becerra health and human services each part each each of these people are all appointed by the president to head up this this aspect of the bureaucracy and they can change they can change, all right? President Trump's cabinet changed almost like underwear, constantly replacing people. Okay? All right, so that's the federal level of the executive branch. What's the next level down? You don't have to, are you guys writing all these? Yeah. Uh, okay. 
Might be a good, might be a good idea. Oh, okay. All right. I'll give you a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. I think they get. I think they have like commission, like contests for artists to create it. Oh, really? Yeah. And they pay like they. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Okay. Still not ready? No problem. I'm not in a rush. I guess I wasn't anticipating you guys writing all that. I need to come up with more stuff to say. Tell us about your favorite department. My favorite department? Yeah, the one you think is the Historically, the Department of State has the most powerful people in it. For about 150 years, if you were the Secretary of State, you became president. It was like the stepping stone, with a couple of exceptions. Well, you see, the Federal Department of Education doesn't re really do much, because do you, re you guys remember we talked about federalism? Yeah. Who's, whose responsibility is to do education? The it's the states. So, yeah, the West Virginia Department of Education, I have a very, very vivid opinion about. <laughs> the United States Department of Education, not so much. It's not really their responsibility to do education. So you're still with them? I mean, you get, any of you guys eat breakfast today? The school breakfast? How much was it? Free. Free. You know why? The United States Department of Education says so. They gave grants to our school to give free lunches and breakfasts to all students. How nice. Okay. All right. Moving on to the state. There he is. Big Jim. What is the title of this gentleman? Governor of West Virginia, and his name is Jim Justice. He's a Beckley guy. He's a Beckley guy. Went to Woodrow Wilson. Associates more with Greenbrier County now. Well, he went to Woodrow, so. All right. What is his job? Let's keep the sarcasm to a minimum. What is his job? Enforce laws of the state of West Virginia. Enforce the laws of West Virginia. That is his job. Enforce the laws of the state of West Virginia. Does he have help? Much like the President of the United States, the, the Governor of the state of West Virginia mm -hmm. is able to appoint cabinet members of their own that hut up the different bureau bureaucratic aspects of our state government, like the West Virginia Department of Education, like West Virginia Department of Health and Human Services. There's all kinds of departments within the state of West Virginia. And all of that goes toward administering the state's bureaucracy. Excuse me, bureaucracy. He also has the ability to grant pardons for federal crimes? No, only state crimes. Has the ability to grant pardons for state crimes. So if you are arrested by, you know, for a, for breaking a state law, you go to, you know, state court. If you're found guilty, you go to state prison. And then if the governor likes you, he can pardon you for that. All right? Or if the governor is moved or if there's a petition, whatever. It's up to the governor. Okay. Yep. Yep. It, for state crimes. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just say something more vague, y'all? 
This is what he looks like. There's a picture of him in the armory. You know how they have all those basketball teams? All right. Just like the president, he also has a cabinet. And I'm pretty sure this is still the same. But these cabinet departments advise the governor and assist the governor in carrying out the laws of the state of West Virginia, making sure things run smoothly. And these are the different, the various departments within our state. Commerce and public safety. Revenue. You don't have to write them all down. Okay? Just know that there are men and women, not in the state of West Virginia, but there are men that are that are advisors to the governor and they help the governor to administer the state's bureaucracy, to carry out government. Because that's what any executive branch does. Carries out laws. All right? Now the lowest level, we're just gonna call local government. Okay? Depending upon, as you know, from the legislative branch, depending upon where you live, that depends on your type of local government. If you live in an unincorporated area, such as Coal City, MacArthur, Crab Orchard, Shady Spring, Daniels, um, Josephine, Odd, Rodell, you would be under the control of county government. If you live in an incorporated area, such as Beckley, Sophia, Mab Scott, um, Leicester, those places have a municipal or local government with a mayor, with, with a town council, and, and you know, they have their own set up. You know, they have their own chief of police, their own fire department, as opposed to at the county level. All right? So it all depends upon how your county or how your state sets up local government. States have the ability to create whatever local government they want. In West Virginia, we have 55 counties. And within our counties, there are cities and towns. Like it's the town of Sofia and the city of Beckley. And that's what our state does. Other states, like Pennsylvania does townships, or some states do villages. Yeah, and some states don't have counties. They have parishes. Yeah, so it's all up to the state. It's entirely up to the state, okay? Some states don't even call themselves states. What do they call themselves? Commonwealths. You ever heard that? Yeah. A commonwealth is a state. It's just a different name. They don't, but they don't refer to them. So, uh, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, I think, is a commonwealth. Virginia, but they're just states. West Virginia refer. We are the state of West Virginia. Uh, Massachusetts is a commonwealth. It's just, it's just a name. It's just what they call it. Okay, and that's totally up to the state. It's just a name. What's the difference between a county and a parish? Nothing. What's the difference between a state and a commonwealth? Nothing. Nothing. Just the name. Kind of cool, though. Yeah. Why is the state? Why are the states able to do that? Where does it say the states can do that? The Tenth Amendment, the Reserve Powers Clause, where the states can make decisions for themselves. Now this. Graphic organizer you see here, is this the same for every local government on earth on, in America? Not even close. Not only does it vary by state to state, but it can vary from county to Like, do you think Kanawha County is going to have different county government than, say, uh, Wyoming County? Everybody's heads should be nodding up and down. There's not even a traffic light in Wyoming County. And Kanawha County is the largest county in our state. Heavy, lots of population there, dense, lots of 
you know, lots of services to be provided to people. There's, you know, do you, so do you think the, the Wyoming County Department of Transportation is going to be as busy as the Kanawha County Department of Transportation? It's going to be a lot different, a lot different. There's no, there's not even a stoplight, all right, in Wyoming County. So it's going to be different just based upon where you are, the locality. Local governments as well. Even, you know, county boards of education. Raleigh County gets, we, have, we pass a levy. We have a pretty wealthy board of education. Summers County, teachers have to pay for their, to like make copies with their own money. They have to pay for the paper. Okay? So it all depends on where you live. Okay? So um, not all local governments are the same or created equal. And also politics. Cities in the south are not going to have the same kind of laws as cities in the north, okay? So there's some cities in the south you can walk around with a, with a gun. You try to do that in New York, they put you in prison forever, it seems like, okay? Because it's different. It's different. Politics also guide things, all right? So just know that local governments can change depending upon where you are, all right? And the nature of the people. Okay, so... Let's go back to talking about President of the United States and what it's like to be the President of the United States. Just some basic information. So let's say you are elected to be President of the United States of America. You get paid to do that job? Yeah. yeah. How much? You get an annual salary of, salary of $400,000 bucks. Not too bad, huh? Who's more important? The President of the United States or Oprah Winfrey? <laughs> Oprah makes like a thousand times that. Or how about Patrick Mahomes? He got a $600 million contract. To play for 10 years, so that's, what is that? I don't do math. Six, 60, million. 60 million a year? Is he more important than the president? Patrick Mahomes only works, he only works 17 Sundays a year. Not too bad, huh? And he's obviously working other times. Should we pay the president more? Yes. Historically, presidents are already loaded. There's very few presidents that were poor, like Harry Truman. He was a men, he owned a men's clothing store. Okay, he he kind of died penniless, honestly. Um, uh, president Obama was not a millionaire until he wrote a book about be, like getting ready to become president. But then he became a millionaire before he was president. But he wasn't before. But by the time he was president, he was already a millionaire. Uh, yeah, President Trump is definitely not hurting before, during, or after his presidency. Um, even even President Biden, he's he's a millionaire. Okay, so tradition. Like, I, I don't know that there. I don't think Bill Clinton was a millionaire, but he he's not hurting. Um, yeah, like I don't know that we've had many presidents to accept this money. Most of them just give it back. Okay, like I just. Or they'd get donated to charity or something. Okay, so but they do get it. It is there, you know. If I if I were to become president, I'd be like, yeah, half a million bucks a year almost. All right, I need that. Cool. But I I don't think I have to worry about that. All right, so they do get receive an annual salary. In addition to this, they also have an expense budget where they can spend fifty thousand dollars on updating the White House. And they can do this fifty thousand annually. President Obama put in a basketball court. Richard Nixon put in a bowling alley. Uh, the Kennedys added a garden. You can, they can just do what they want. It's fifty grand. You can make changes to the White House, okay? Or buy stuff. You know, it's their expense account. Fifty grand, okay? Uh, in addition. The president also receives free lodging 
hey, you don't have to pay rent. You get to live in a home that belongs to the American government, paid for by the American people. What's it called? The White House. It's pretty awesome. It's a mansion. Anybody ever been in it? It's awesome. It's a mansion. You get to live there. The governor even gets to live in a mansion. We have a mansion in Charleston. The governor, it's called the governor's mansion. And it's a mansion. Like multiple rooms and stuff. All right. So free lodging. That's awesome. The president also gets the best medical care on planet Earth. So if the president needs some kind of procedure and... Um, that the procedure is done by a doctor in Yugoslavia. The president will get taken to Yugoslavia and have the procedure done. Okay? Best medical care in the world. In addition, the president also receives personal protection for life. What is the bureaucratic agency that protects the president and their family? Secret Service. Which is not, that was actually not the intention for the creation of the Secret Service? Do you guys know what the Secret Service was actually created for? Um, Correct. Hunting down counterfeiters. But it has evolved over the years, so now the Secret Service is uh, tasked with securing the president, their family, and other important American uh, representatives. Okay. Um, this is the only perks the president gets? How does the president get around? He can't just like hop on a public bus. He's the president. The president has a variety of transportation vehicles. One is a Cadillac limousine called the Beast. The Beast is called a Beast for a reason. It is a beast. We will look at some of the features of the Beast in a minute. The president also has access to a helicopter, which he can use. It's operated by the United States Marine Corps. It is called Marine One. The president also has access to a fleet of jets. All of them are called Air Force One. It's not just one plane. And in fact, it's not called Air Force One until the president is aboard. It's just a plane. But when the president, any plane that the president is on is Air Force One, just so you know. Yeah. Look at that Cadillac. I do. It looks just like that. It's not a limousine, though. Yeah, it would be Air Force One. The Secret Service would never allow that, just so you know. Okay? All right, now, so let's take a look at the Beast. All right, the Beast has several features. First off, look at the door. It is one foot thick of reinforced glass, reinforced uh, metal. It's bulletproof and bombproof. It is bombproof. The top speed of the beast is 45 miles an hour. It weighs more than a semi-trailer. Well, think about how heavy it is. I mean, it's this much thick steel all the way around. It is extreme. It's diesel. It's not a gasoline engine. It is a turbocharged diesel engine, just like a semi-truck. Uh, it gets like one or two miles to the gallon. The tires are, are reinforced with Kevlar, not, and they're not filled with air. They're solid rubber, so you can't go flat. They don't go flat. They're Kevlar, and they're solid rubber. So that you could run over nothing but nails, and you're just going to keep on going. Okay? Uh, it is military-grade armor. There are buttons, because, you know, the Secret Service walks around the beast whenever it's, you know, in t cities and towns. And Secret Service has buttons that they can push, and machine guns pop out of the hood, and they're ready to go. Um, the, the windshield converts at nighttime to night vision for the driver. 
So if like by some chance the headlights go out, the, the driver will still be able to see in perfect clarity. Um, obviously the windows are all bulletproof and blast proof. The, the, there is, um, at all times, the president has, his, has blood on board in case the president is injured and needs to have a blood transfusion. There, um, and that's just what they tell us. Imagine all the features that it has that they don't let us know about. I think that would be pretty cool if it were. I don't know that it is. It's also like super tall. Like President Obama is not a short guy, and he—that is a car. That's not an SUV standing beside. That is a car. It's very—it's unique. There's about 20 beasts, and they're they're sent all over the world. And whenever the president's in town, that's the president's car. They're all called the beast. Who named it the beast? I think uh, President Bush. He got the first beast. Of course he did. Yeah, yeah. The second <laughs> President Bush. It just sounds like something that he would come up with. Well, I mean, he wasn't wrong. it's a beast. <laughs> it's a beast. Also, in case of a gas or chemical attack, it's completely airtight, and and it has its own oxygen supply, so the president can be moved out of of harm's way. That's a pretty good perk. Pretty good perk. The United States government has a contract with General Motors to, to, make, to keep them running, and that's why they're Cadillacs. It's an American car. They're not going to use a Lexus, you know, use an American car for the president. Okay? Well, not very practical. It obviously has, like, its own Internet. It has phone lines. It has all that stuff. It's, it, it's a pretty good perk. Okay? Um, and all the all the stuff that you know the other like the blood and all that is, all, is also on the the helicopter and the airplane. All right. Okay, that's the pri the president. Pretty good perks, huh? Okay, next time we'll do the vice president.